Welcome to session four of the Computing at Home series of lessons. This week is all about variables. And as it is National Storytelling Week, we're going to have some fun with words to show you just how variables work. So what is a variable? Well, think of a variable as a little bit like a box or a bag for life. That's because a variable is like a container that holds a piece of information or data. Let's see if you can answer some very difficult questions. What is your name? When is your birthday? What is your teacher's name? Now, I bet that you can answer all of those questions correctly. Surely you did. Our brain stores information in certain places, and it isn't very often that we get things like this mixed up. If I ask you your name, you wouldn't respond with June the 15th. And if I asked you when your birthday is, you wouldn't say Mrs Bond. Computers work in the same way, but like everything with a computer, it is only ever as good as the information it is given. So variables are like containers that hold pieces of information. However, some information can change. For example, who was your class teacher last year? Who is your class teacher this year? And if you're a bit older, think back. Who was your class teacher when you were in reception? This is a piece of information that changes from time to time. Variables like this are around us all the time, and some of them can change really quickly. Have a look at this. On Monday, it is sunny. On Tuesday, it is sunny. On Wednesday, it's going to rain. And on Thursday, it's snowing. On Friday, it's sunny. On Saturday, it's raining. And on Sunday, there'll be thunderstorms. Take 30 seconds to look at this weather forecast and ask yourself this question. What can change in the weather forecast and what will remain the same? In a weather forecast, the pieces of information that could be different are the types of weather that we may see on those days. A computer needs to know what all the possibilities are for the weather, which might look something like this. The weather equals sun, the weather equals rain, the weather equals snow. And with this information, it can be programmed to give us the weather forecast on a website like the BBC. Let's try an activity where we actively change some variables. As it's National Storytelling Week, I've taken a classic piece of text from the Gruffalo. Who is this creature with terrible claws and terrible teeth in its terrible jaws? He has knobbly knees and turned out toes and a poisonous wart at the end of his nose. His eyes are orange, his tongue is black. He has purple prickles all over his back. Now your challenge is to change some of this information. In this case, I've decided the variables we will change, but you could change anything. Perhaps you could write out your own version, record a video, or make an audio file of your version of the story. It would also be lovely to see what your new version of the Gruffalo would look like, so why not draw him? Here is my example. Who is this teacher with pointy claws and terrible teeth in his terrible cake hole? He has knobbly elbows and turned out ears and a poisonous veruca at the end of his big toe. His eyes are red, his tongue is blue. He has purple scales all over his back. Oh help, oh no, it's a Gruffalo. Pause the video and have a go. So how many of you ended up with a very strange looking Gruffalo? How many of you ended up with a story that lost all of the rhyming words? This is the result of changing the variables. Changing the variables can completely change the original object or poem or story. It means that when we program our computers, getting the variables right is so important. 
We can see the impact of changing variables in the spirals activity on Swift playgrounds. In this activity, we can assign colors and decimals to variables to create and alter different designs. Look at what happens when I change the variables in the code to adjust the spoke length, the wheel radius and track radius. What do you see when you look at this spiral? Perhaps this? If you have Swift Playgrounds, try out the spirals activity and see what happens when you change the variables. We can of course use variables in all sorts of places and art is a great place to start. We're going to change some variables to make things look different. Your second challenge is to explore yourself and change some of your own variables. You're going to do this by creating a self-portrait and then sharing it on Google Classroom, Seesaw or your learning platform. You could do this through a drawing, a painting, a collage or editing a photograph. So what are we going to do? Well, the artist Andy Warhol was very good at changing variables when he looked at the image of a person. Here we can see how he took a photograph of Marilyn Monroe, a famous actress, and then change the skin color, hair color, eyeshadows, and lips. The original portrait of Marilyn Monroe changes because the variables are changed. So here is my self-portrait. So now it's over to you. Have a go at completing your own self-portrait and then share it with your class teacher. What will you change about yourself? Next week in session five, we are going to have a lot of fun with conditional code. I'll see you then. <laughs>